Welcome back to Terror by the Bayham David Part 2. Instead of hitting pause, I hit stop. And I didn't want to re-record what I had before, so I'm just going to keep going with it. I looked up Steve Scalise and Donald Trump's relationship. Steve Scalise uh, wouldn't denounce the big lie. He's been very supportive of Trump. He's been described as David Duke without the baggage. Um... He believes that uh, the Department of Justice has been weaponized to give Hunter Biden a sweetheart deal and, uh, you know, and to go after Trump. So, yeah, I could see where he would be a MAGA favorite amongst them. I don't know if the conservatives still support him or not or if they view him. He's kind of in between. Anyways, um I, I could put these cards back the way I had them, but I had already flipped them, so I'm just putting them back out in the positions they were before, and I'll explain it. So Steve Scalise would would have the leg up on this one. He, he would be fighting from a position of, uh, of strength if, if he was going to be the nominee. He's going to have Trump's support. In the past, we have the King of Swords. My translation on that is, is that he's a very strict, hard-nosed person, who, whose job, again, is to make sure the Republicans are all lined up in voting the way the party leadership wants them to vote. Um, the current situation, the chariot, I think his name and his candidacy would have momentum. Um, and he might very well be the first person that they pick to uh, replace McCarthy as the speaker. But there's some, there's some concern here. There's some hesitation. It might have something to do with this moon card that's under the deck. There might be information about David Duke without the baggage. There could be some baggage here that we don't know about <clears throat> or that might be discoverable that might slow down his um, or give pause to him wanting to be the next speaker of the house. The lesson to be learned, though, is the world card. Um, this information, I think, if it gets out, it ends his run. Or if he's afraid it's going to get out, he will terminate his run. But if this information could be kept secret, I think he completes his run and starts a new journey. If he ends his run, he's he'll get off scot-free and this information won't be leaked out. So um, that's kind of what I'm thinking is happening with Steve Scalise. What I wanted to do, though, was throw... Um, I wanted to throw qual uh, qualifiers, uh, clarifiers on the moon card because I want to find out, <laughs> don't we all, what's this, what's this mystery? What's this confusion? What's unknown going on behind the scenes with Steve Scalise that might give him pause? What's this? All about? The moon card's uh, one of the most difficult ones to read, so getting clarifiers, I don't know if that's really going to do me any good. So actually three cards I would want to do clarifiers on. The Moon card, the Nine of Wands, and the uh, and the uh, Fool. So Steve Scalise, what's this Moon card all about? Throw a couple clarifiers until we get a major arcana. Let's say up to three. Well, there's the Eight of Swords just popped out, being held hostage. You know, it might be just be that, you know, his ties with McCarthy or actually I think <clears throat> that if that moon card were he doesn't want the position because he might see himself in the same the same quandary that McCarthy was in. That, you know, this just isn't set. For, this isn't this is not a position set up for success. It's set up for failure. But let's see. What do we have on the moon card? There he is again. <clears throat> you know, fighting. He's got the advantage. But afraid of being left out in the cold, you know, um, interesting. I think if he takes it, you know what it is? He doesn't see a way. There we go. He doesn't see a way to unite the two factions. He doesn't see a way that he can get the, the MAGA Republicans and the conservatives on the same page and get the Republicans um uh, back back in lockstep with each other. You know, that's that's what's called that's his biggest concern. 
he knows he could do the job. He's not afraid. He's not, he knows he can do the job. And he knows he can unite various people in the party. He's afraid that they're not going to want to do it. And it's going to take a lot of time to get these different factions to coalesce again. That's what's underneath it. That's okay. So that explains two things. You know, um, that also explains that's the un, the the under energy, the energy underneath the reading, and then the overarching energy is. I think the underlying he understands what the what the core problem is. You can't unite these folks right now, and the overarching energy is. Uh, it would be exhausting to try and. What type of success or guarantees is he going to get? Basically, is he setting himself up to fail? Is he going to be McCarthy 2.0 because the MAGA crowd and the conservatives won't agree on anything? Then we have the Fool card. So I want to throw clarifiers on the Fool card just to see what the Fool card means for the energy at this moment. Sorry for this having to be a two-parter. Uh, <laughs> Again, I just didn't hit the pause key. I hit the stop key. Okay, so let's see. Clarifiers on that, um, on the fool card. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I say I stop after one. <laughs> you got the Wheel of Fortune. Maybe I'll keep going with that one, though. Um, it's karmic. It comes around, goes around. Got the planning. wonder if he doesn't stay that long. Ace of Wands. Oh God! Um, what's underneath it? The the fool card. What what is it? It's it's karmic. It's if he's meant to have it, he'll have it. He's got strong ideas. He knows the push he needs to do. He's got the planning, but at the same time, he's going to be held hostage by the party. It's almost like he knows that the only way to get things done is through bipartisan work. Or maybe if he can't get these folks to unite, then he's going to have to go uh, reach out to the Democrats and be held hostage by the Democrats. Because I think if he takes it, he's going to run into the same issue McCarthy did. It just may not be as quick. But the... Um, the MAGA faction are going to want concessions out of him. Same thing. They're gonna they're gonna want those concessions out of him. You know what might happen is uh, maybe the vote doesn't go. Um, uh, the votes might start happening. He's not approved the first time around, and then he has to start negotiating with uh, the various groups trying to figure out how to um, how to get them to unite. And he starts getting closer and closer. But in order to get over the hump, he has to give up too much. And then he realizes he's in a similar position to McCarthy. And he might just walk at that point. It's like, nope, don't want it. But that's a, you know, that's a free will choice right there. You know, he could do what McCarthy did, give up the farm, and then, you know, sleep in the mess that you just made. Or he could stick to his guns and there's multiple votes uh, going through trying to get him in. And he decides that, you know, I can't give up anymore. I can't compromise anymore or else I'm not going to be able to do my job effectively. And then just walks away from it, which is probably what McCarthy should have done. Okay, so that's my reading on the current state of the house. Thank you for... Um, Thank you for watching my two videos here. <laughs> if I could figure out how to splice them, I would do that. But I don't think I've got the video editing software here to do that. Uh, thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for all your comments, likes, and shares that you do to keep my video bubbling up in the search windows for to the new viewers. And to those new viewers, welcome to the channel. I hope you found this reading insightful. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.